That's the point that uh, Janet Albrechtson makes today. I mean, she goes into some detail, drafts a, um, a proposed letter, I think we can call it that, that if the voice was to get up, that the people in and around the voice could send to government next day with their ambit claims based on what they regard as their constitutional footing. She's written this with the constitutional law experts, letters published there in the, the paper today. Uh, she makes a point that, that under Labor's plan, with this language as it stands, we'll have co-government and we'll have policy chaos. Now, Paul Kelly, is she right? Well, look, Peter, the point to make here is that all sorts of things uh, might happen and all sorts of things might not happen. We can't predict. But what we can do is we can look at the words of the constitutional amendment. This is what we are required to do. And those words are very substantial. It means that the voice can be making representations across the ambit of executive government to, uh, to the mm -hmm. cabinet, to all ministers, to public servants, to departmental heads, to authorities from Centrelink, to uh, the Great Barrier Reef Authority, to resource development authorities, to climate change authorities, that is the power that's been created. And we should uh, bear in mind that when people tell us that we shouldn't really assess the power, or when the Prime Minister says that questions about whether the voice would have given recommendations to the Parliament in terms of the safeguard mechanism that this is a distraction, well, I think that is a very deceptive comment on the part of the Prime Minister. Um, we need to look at the power that's been created and, frankly, if the voice was in operation, mm. then one assumes the voice would have given recommendations in relation to the safeguard mechanism, just as one assumes the voice would give recommendations on a whole series of issues, whether they primarily concern Indigenous people or whether they simply concern Indigenous people as part of the broader Australian population. Mm. That's the power being created. That's the institution being created. And we should look at that, consider that, and people should make a judgment about how that would work in terms of the operation of the Australian government and parliament. I mean, this is about a fundamental change in power. And the Indigenous leaders have been frank enough to say that. That's what they're saying. The Prime Minister is not saying that, and he needs to be, I think, called to account far more than what we've seen so far and asked to explain how the voice will actually work. Just, Paul, Paul, just quickly, I mean, how can we have a reasonable debate when we haven't got the information? The Prime Minister won't talk to us about the detail. You're right, some Indigenous leaders are belling their cat with a little bit that they've put out there. You've got people like Noel Pearson, whom I regard highly or used to regard highly, highly I might say, um, really going after Julian Lisa and, and absolutely without a doubt making comments that, that reference his Jewish faith. Uh, he made those on SBS on, on Thursday night. I played them in, in my comments a little earlier. How can we have a reasonable debate if that's the tone we're getting from the Yes campaign? Well, it's up to both sides of the campaign to try and ensure we have a reasonable debate. But, I mean, it won't be easy. This is a very important referendum. There are um, very important competing positions held on both sides. Uh, Noel Pearson is someone that I have admired and respected for many decades. I think some of the comments that he's made have been unwise and inappropriate, but I recognise the role he's played as a principal architect, perhaps the principal architect of The Voice. Uh, but uh, I think it's really important that we, that we try, that both sides try to ensure we have a civil debate. Finally, I might say about the coalition position, while I recognised that mm. Peter Dutton was going to oppose the model of the voice on offer, I do have queries about the actual position that the coalition has adopted and the tactical wisdom of that, saying that they uh, support a legislated uh, voice at local and regional level but not at the national level, and then putting a big emphasis on the Solicitor General's opinion. I think that mm. uh, there are questions to be raised in terms of the 
wisdom of the actual opposition position there. Yeah, I agree with you. I wrote yesterday in my column, I think that will die a quick death uh, this week and it'll be a position of great clarity because you can't be half pregnant on The Voice. Paul Kelly, thank you.